guys, it's Alexis, aka The Soft Reader, and I'm here today to do my June book haul. Um, I'm actually doing this a little bit later than I usually try to because I had to wait on a few of these books to come in because I ordered them at the very end of the month. But they're all here, I'm excited about everything I bought, like I say, every book haul, so we'll just go ahead and get straight on into it. The first three books I'm going to mention I all got from Book Depository. Um, for the pure fact of two of these, I wanted the UK covers for and then the third one I just decided to go ahead and buy when I bought these other two. The first one I'm going to mention is Release by Patrick Ness. Um, I have actually already read this book, but this is Patrick Ness's most recent release. Um, it doesn't actually come out in the United States until September, but it's already out in the UK, and I just am in love with this cover. And having already read this book, like I think this cover fits the story like so well. Um, this is about our main character named Adam, who is a queer teen from a small town, and he comes from a fairly religious family, and it's about this day in his life as he's kind of dealing with a lot of things, a lot of personal things, a lot of things with the people in his life. I like to say that this book is about release. This book is about the kinds of release that we as people can want. Um, so whether it's spiritual, emotional, physical, sexual, it's about like the ways in which we as people can seek release. That's how I like to explain this book to people because I find that all of those are in this book. I do already have a review on this on my Goodreads page if you're interested to check that out. But yeah, so released by Patrick Ness. The next book I got from Book Depository also because I wanted the UK cover, and that is Red Sister by Mark Lawrence. I have been wanting to read a Mark Lawrence book. Um, I have a bunch of his books on my Kindle, and it's about our main character, Nona, who is raised in a convent of assassins, I believe. I This is his most recent release. It's his first YA book. Um, and I just love this UK cover a lot, and I've just been dying to read a Mark Lawrence book, so I'm hoping that maybe I'll start with this one. The next one I'm going to mention is the 20th anniversary edition of Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling. Of course, I picked up the Hufflepuff edition because I am a Hufflepuff, and honestly, the Hufflepuff hardback edition is my favorite anyway. I just think that the yellow and black looks good together. The yellow is bright enough that you can see it on the black. I know when I was looking at some of the other ones, like in the pictures I saw online I couldn't even see the Ravenclaw one like I couldn't make out any of the details so I don't know what it looks like in person but literally I couldn't see it like I couldn't look at it for like more than two seconds because it was hurting my eyes because I was straining to see so bad um, now however the paperback 20th anniversary edition I hate the Hufflepuff one because it's yellow back and then it's like black details and I hate it it's way too much of a mustardy yellow color and I strongly dislike it, but love this edition. It's got the sprayed edges with the house colors. Um, the inside is the very vibrant yellow. Um, it also comes with house information at the very beginning, um, so information about House Hufflepuff, Helga Hufflepuff, um, which is really, really cool that it comes with all of these little details about the house and it also comes with a little map of Hogwarts. So these editions are really, really cool. And I definitely think it's worth getting one in your house colors, especially if you like Harry Potter. The next five books I all ordered on Amazon, which I have a gripe about, but that's for another time or place. Um, three of these were new releases, and two of these I got as to finish off a series I had. Um, so to start with the new releases, Our Dark Duet by Victoria Schwab. Um, this is the final book in her Monsters of Verity duology. I read The Savage Song in May. Um, in prep for this one coming out in June, and so I did get it. Um, I'm a little peeved because literally every corner is damaged, and I got it from Amazon. I'm a little upset about that. I made sure I wrote them in an email about it. Um, but this book is big. I was not expecting this book to be as big as it is. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. I didn't... The Savage Long, I liked it. It's not my favorite thing in the world, but I'm really interested to see how this concludes. The next one I'm going to mention is Down Among the Sticks and Bones by Sean and McGuire. This is the companion sequel to Every Heart a Doorway, um, and this one also came out in June. Very, very small book. Um, I actually have already read this one too, um, but Every Heart a Doorway tells the story of these kids who come back from Portal World, so Narnia and Alice in Wonderland and those kinds of things and then it's like their lives after they've come back from these portal worlds and them trying to like readjust to being back in our world. 
Um, and so this is actually a prequel that follows two of the characters from Every Heart a Doorway, twins Jack and Jill, and it's about the world that they went to. Again, like I said, I have already read this one and reviewed it on my Goodreads page um, if you're interested to go see my thoughts there. The next new release I got was Want by Cindy Pawn. And um, this book is so much bigger than I thought it was, um, but I just loved the cover and I got it and realized that it was a, this amazing purpley color on the inside. Love that. But this follows our main character Jason who lives in a futuristic world where basically the air is just totally polluted and toxic and so the wealthy wear special suits that filter out the bad air and allow them to survive while the poor are left to breathe this toxic air that shortens their lives and it follows our main character Jason whose mother has recently died of this polluted air and so he basically infiltrates like the wealthy society to try and take down this corporation that's only providing suits for the wealthy um, and it's basically about like the conspiracy that he discovers when he does that. Um, I've always wanted to read a Cindy Pond book. She's another one of those authors I've been dying to check out and this is her most recent release that came out in June and it sounds so cool, super futuristic. I'm very excited to pick this one up. And the final two books I got from that Amazon order were, like I said, the next two books in a, se in a series I started actually in June. I read the first book for, so I wanted to pick up the next two books. And that is Lola and the Boy Next Door and Isla and the Happily Ever After, both by Stephanie Perkins. Um, in the paperback editions like this. Um, I had read Anna and the French Kiss in June, really, really enjoyed it, so decided right away I was going to pick up the next two books in this series. This is a companion series, so each book follows a different main character, um, and I'm kind of excited for that because I feel like the story wrapped up nicely, but I can see where these are all going to tie into each other, so I'm really excited to eventually pick up the rest of these whenever I get a chance. But yes, really enjoyed the first one, hoping I'm going to enjoy these as much. The next three books I'm going to mention are also all from Book Depository, but it was a later Book Depository order. These were all nominees for the Bailey's Women's Prize for Women Fiction, um, which is just Bailey's does a thing every year where they celebrate female authors, and they select a few and then they go through a list, you know, like any other literary prize. Um, but this is all about female writers. So of the shortlist, there were six books on the shortlist. These were the three that sounded the most interesting to me. Yes, I went ahead and got two of the nominees and I went ahead and got the winner as well. The first one I'm going to mention is Do Not Say We Have Nothing by Madeline Tien. And this actually was shortlisted for the Man Booker as well, but it was on the Bailey's Prize for Women's Literature. This takes place in 1990 when a 10-year-old girl and her mother, who basically take in a refugee from China in the aftermath of the Tiananmen Square protests. And so it's about this young woman named Ai Ming and her story um, living under the Chairman Mao revolution in China. Um, and also about Marie and her mother and how they interact with this young woman and the stories they hear and how that shapes their lives. That's a time period I don't, I want to know more about. I know a pretty basic amount of information about it, but I'm definitely interested to read more literature that takes place during China's Cultural Revolution. Um, so yeah, so I'm very excited to get to this one when I get a chance. The next one I'm going to mention um, is The Dark Circle by Linda Grant. This follows a brother and a sister during the 1950s in London, basically as a huge tuberculosis outbreak is spreading through the city, and so both this brother and sister actually get put in, into a sanatorium for their TB, and it's a lot about them in the sanatorium being treated for TB, but also about like the things they learn about themselves and each other and the world as a whole. I am really excited for this one. Um, as you guys know, I studied public health in school, um, and so we did a lot of historical study as far as like learning um, about outbreaks and stuff. Pretty much anything that has to do with infectious diseases um, and treatments and stuff is like automatically right up my alley. So it's what piqued my interest about this is that it's about this brother and sister basically being treated for TB in a sanatorium in the 1950s. I'm all here for that. That is like all of my boxes checked. Um, so I'm super excited to get this one. It's not very long and yeah, I'm hoping I'll really like it. The last one I got from the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction shortlist was actually the one that ended up winning the award and that is The Power by Naomi Alderman. This is about a futuristic world where women suddenly have this ability that allows them to like cause pain and so suddenly women no longer are going to be oppressed so they basically decide to become the oppressors to men and it's about 
them now finally being the empowered gender in society um, and about like the roles totally being switched between men and women. Um, and I've just heard really interesting things about this. It's just totally up my alley. I heard it's super feminist and it's a lot about gender roles and the effect that they have on society and yeah I'm super excited about this one. The last two books I'm gonna mention I also got on Amazon because it was the end of the month. One of these was one of my most anticipated releases for the year and I went to buy it in the bookstore at my house and they didn't have it so I was just like okay Amazon don't let me down. And to get free shipping I went ahead and bought another book with it. The first one I'm going to mention is the other book that I added on because I've just been he hearing so many incredible things about this book and that is Eliza and Her Monsters by Francesca Zappia. This follows our main character Eliza who basically writes this really really popular web comic um, and she's anonymous in writing it but it's really well beloved. Um, and so she basically, um, at her school, discovers there's this boy, I think he might be a new boy or something like that, and he actually is a very, very famous fan fiction writer for her webcomic series, and so it's about, like, them becoming friends and then I think actually becoming romantically involved. Um, I've just heard so many amazing things about this book. I've heard this book covers the many different aspects of fandom. Um, and I've heard that this book has a lot to do with mental health as well, um, and a lot about the struggles Eliza deals with in regards to her art. And yeah, I'm just really excited to pick this one up. And it actually features like art in it um, that I think is really, really cool. Um, and it comes with art and like text posts and stuff that it look like Tumblr text posts. And yeah. Um, I'm just really excited to hear that, check this one out because I've just heard so many fantastic things about it. The last book I'm going to mention is my most anticipated release actually for the first half of 2017. And I finally have it in my hands, I'm so excited and I'm going to start it like in like a week or two. Um, I'm just so excited and that is The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. Um, this also came out at the very tail end of June. This follows our bisexual main character Monty who is an English lord and him and his sister and his best friend Percy who he's been in love with uh, many years are going on a grand tour of Europe and I believe it takes place in like the 1800s and it's just about them going like around Europe about the hilarious shenanigans they get involved with. Um, heard fantastic things about this so far. I don't think I've heard, seen a single person give it less than like four stars. I've heard it's hysterical and I've heard that people really just love the characters in this and the romance and I'm just so excited for it. Like as soon as I heard about it I knew right away it was a book that I was going to pick up as soon as I got my hands on it and it's here. It's finally here. Also I didn't know it at the time of buying it but like look how nice these two look together. Like, I think their spines and like even their covers look really nice together. Total accident, but I'm proud of myself. Alright guys, so that was my June book haul. Um, it was a, quite a bit of books. Um, I think I bought all of them online. I don't think I bought a single book in store this month. But I don't see myself buying any books for like the next two months, except for like maybe two or three each month. So I think maybe I subconsciously went a little crazy this month, but that's okay, I think. It's not okay. It's not okay at all. All right. Well, you guys should let me know what was your best purchase that you made in June or if you bought any of these or have read any of these and you'd like to talk to me about them. I'd love to hear it and I'll see you guys soon with another video.